Okay, here we are. We're talking about the EC reaction, ECE reaction, where the two previous, or the two E reactions are reversible. And the simplest case is when the second reduction is more negative than the first, and the, for the case of an overall reduction process. Uh, that's usually not the case. As we already mentioned, a lot of times the second reduction is more easily reduced than the first. Uh, because that reaction is occurring for some reason, there's some energy uh, release when that react second re the chemical reaction occurs, so often what's formed is a lower uh, energy product that can be easily reduced, as I said. So let's take a look and see if we can simulate that sort of situation. So what we'll do is we'll swap the, the relative positions of those two ways. We'll make instead of it minus 0.5, for the first one we'll make it uh, um, minus point, uh, five, and then the second one will be minus point two five. Oops. So now we've got 250 millivolts more positive for the second redox process. Well, let's just take a look at what we see here. Okay, now we see one wave and what looks like a, a reverse wave for that first reduction process, but in fact, it's not the reverse wave for that first process, it's, a it's the wave for the second process that we've made. And the way to do that a little bit better, perhaps, is to go back, I'm not sure if we can do this. Um, Right. We'll show you what happens if we do the sweep and then we start again. Uh, oh, so we're going out and back and here's the wave and then we see that the wave for the what we've made and then this is the initial wave for species A according to our scheme. Notice species A is greatly diminished in the peak because what's happened is we've, during that course of this experiment, we've reduced a lot the concentration of that species next to the electrode surface and it never gets a chance to recover because as soon as we make it, it's all being chewed up and only during this particular period of time can we re-diffuse new A in there to get the uh, material out. So if you look at your notes, and I'll probably just leave it on the computer for time, purposes, you'll see that this is very similar to the uh, case that they've, they've illustrated of 0.4, which is lambda 0.4 values, which is K over V over RT over F. And um, we can change our value somewhat. Let's say, let's make our um, decay rate, now it's, uh, it's fairly fast. Let's make our decay rate a little bit slower. From 100, let's go to 1, which for an EC reaction would be put it squarely in the KG case, and that's what we're, where we'd be in this particular case as well. So now we will not make very much of uh, species C during the overall process. Uh, but we do make some and we see the wave for that. It's smaller now in amplitude. But notice particularly the, the, the first wave is not as diminished in amplitude. And if we continue that process of changing the decay rate so that we're down in the very end of the KG process. So now we've gone to point one reciprocal seconds, we see the wave is almost the same as we'd expect. There is some unusual business going on here, which is about the only thing you'd be able to tell when you did that reaction. So if we go from there to the other extreme, just at once again, so that our decay rate is now very fast. We chewed up almost all of the A in the reaction. Here we, here we see the result. 
And so that would be about like two here, you see. And the other one that we just showed would be like lambda just close to, to zero, between zero and uh, 0 0.05. And that's very similar to that. We had 250, they have 240 for the two differences, so it doesn't really make much difference. Our reaction scheme, our change in the number of ele apparent electrons is shown in figure, uh, what they label figure 11.3.24, which is out of the book. And you can see the number of electrons has drops as we change small lambda. Remember lambda again is, in this case, the first order of process K over V. So as we're going to the right, we are making the reaction faster or dropping the scan rate. And N over V drops as the, the rate constant drops. It goes from two to one. And vice versa, the apparent number, the, the ratio of the peak currents of the A and B drops as well. Now it wasn't so obvious to you, but the peak currents has, are, changed, are changing quite, quite a lot. So you probably want to do this at home, want to, want to watch the, as we go from, well let's just do that. Let's, let's remember that's point zero zero one nine. Let's go back to the, that was a, a K value of 500 reciprocal seconds. And let's go to a K value of 0 0.05 reciprocal seconds. Okay, notice that was 0 0.0019, now we're 0 0.0092. So we've gone almost exactly two full difference in the peak height, which is what exactly what we'd expect. And that's what we see on our graph there for what the expected values of the, the current are. And that's what you'd see. And you see our in apparent, there's these uh, zone diagram again for the, for the two uh, processes. We have the DP2 and the DP1 and the KI, and those indicate different zones of the reaction. As we go to completely kinetically controlled, we're in the DP2 region. No kinetic control whatsoever, we're in the DP1 react region. doing here? 11. Now, in the case where we have an a reversible chemical reaction, which is not simulated on our simulation, so I won't d show you that, uh, you can see the zone diagram here. Um, you now have the possibility of an equilibrium from the two points that complicates things a little bit. And you can see there is a significantly different zone diagrams. One of the things is you'll get this KP type region, which indicates the, uh, the equilibrium now is not so important, where you, here you have the equilibrium now very rapid. We can kind of see what's gonna happen here by considering if the equilibrium is very slow and sluggish, if the K value is very large and you have a sluggish equilibrium, that would be down here in this part of the zone. It's effectively as if we've got no equilibrium whatsoever, okay? That's like a, a EC reaction with, with the, when the K is very slow. That would be like this case here. If the equilibrium is, is uh, Large or small doesn't really matter. Now if the equilibrium becomes smaller, or if, the, if KB starts to increase, now we can get into a zone that's very similar to the ECE reaction when KB is much bigger than KF. And that would be, again, down in this part of the, part of the curve, okay? So if we look here, we're essentially this basically would be as the same sort of change as we saw for the EC react, ECE reaction. 
by making KB, uh, well, I'm sorry, this would be like this. So this would be a like KB being large, I think. Or, why is it KB and not KF? I don't know. K, it should, I, I don't know. It should be KF on top, KB on the bottom, so I don't know why. But anyway, that, that would be a, a large value of this term here, and that would be in this zone over here. When there is an intermediate region, then the two reactions have some sort of a trade-off, and you can see that be can become quite complicated as we shift the equilibrium one way, shift the equilibrium the other way, and, um, and it would be very difficult, really, to tease out some of the, the numbers in this particular part of the zone. All right. Here's another reaction to worry about. This would be an irreversible reaction and an irreversible chemical reaction and a, a reversible reaction. But we've got these arrows indicating something unusual going on. And they refer to the fact that we're talking about both an oxidation and a reduction process in one set of reactions. One example here would be this um, reaction of from C being reduced to C radical anion. And this, that would be this uh, olefin here. And this is a cis reaction. And here's the trans compound. And when it goes to the radical anion, what's going to happen is that the cis now is losing some of its double bond character. And so it can shift over to the trans form of the material relatively easily. So that would be considered to be, in this case, an irreversible transformation from the cis radical anion to the trans radical anion. The trans radical anion is much easier to, is easy to oxidize at that point. So in other words, we've got a reduction to the cis radical anion, but at this point we can oxidize the trans radical anion so we can return it back to its original oxidation state, but in a new conformation. So we've got reduction, chemical step, oxidation, and the overall process is C to T, but notice the electrons basically have canceled out. This would be an example of a reaction which is catalyzed by the presence of an electrode. The electrode is there to serve as a way for the electrons to move in and out, but there is almost no current flow whatsoever. So what you'd notice in this case is that an electrode in the solution would accelerate the rate by many, time, many orders of magnitude without it being there, but then uh, without the electrode there, it doesn't do anything. So that's a, kind of a catalytic type process. Uh, a lot of people are interested in this for um, synthetic type purposes. Saviant uh, has done some work in that area. Let's take a look at a couple other ones. It's the ECE disp reactions. We have, uh, in this case, A to B, B to C, and we'll probably only consider a reversible reaction an irreversible reaction from B to C. And then we can have a reaction where B and C react with the disproportionation rate constant to A and D. And there is a, a couple things to think about. One is there's gonna be a rate constant from B to C that's related to KF over KB and a equilibrium or a, a kinetic parameter lambda, which is KF plus KB over V. And there's also a a uh, lambda sub d, which is a, um, the disproportionation equilibrium constant. All right. Uh, I think I've got this. I've got the... Um, Hmm. 
when I was looking at this, that doesn't make sense to me now, but let's. I guess the next next uh, piece of paper is showing you the um, the electrocatalysis step that's in competition with a di disproportionation reaction, and it's suggesting what happens when we have two parameters to consider: log uh, rho and log sigma. And the idea here is that we can have a going to B, B undergoing a chemical, irreversible chemical reaction to C, a second catalytic chemical reaction to form E, and then E being oxidized to F. So notice again, the overall process is A to F, which is uh, autocatalytic or electrocatalytic. There's no net transfer of electrons to do this transformation, but again, an electrode has to be there to transiently supply the electrons back and forth. The reaction is catalytic. You see that C plus an electron goes to D, and B plus C uh, undergoes this disproportionation reaction to A plus D. So we can have a uh, So an intermediate step here in which the C is, is reacted to form the, from the D species. Again, the overall reaction would be A to D under those two conditions. All right. I think I'm just gonna skip ahead here for that one too, because that's, um, we're getting to the point where I wanna talk about the paper, but I want to finish this up. Here's another example of a reaction of a reduction of a anthroquinarial halide, ARX and ammonia. And this in particular case is 2-chloroquinoline. And in case A, it's an ammonia. In case B, it's with the addition of this uh, nucleophile benzene thiolate, PHS minus. Let's look at case A first. Case A, you see the initial reduction peak of this, and then you have another peak they are called peak D. And so let's take a look at what's happening. And ARX is being reduced to the radical anion, which decays to AR radical plus X minus. Under the conditions in which we've got the reaction occurring, the radical can react with a nucleophile to form a complex, this AR ARNU minus, which can be oxidized to the, um, the nucleophile aerial. So this would be the, the quinoline with the nucleophile. So quinoline benzene thiolate would be what would be formed. Or an alternate reaction would be, without the nucleophile present, you'd form ARX plus AR, or the nucleophile complex plus the initial species goes to the AR nucleophile plus the, initial, the uh, original material. So let's take a look at the shape of the initial wave. This is without the nucleophile present. What's happening in this particular case? Well, we can actually have a pretty good idea. What's happening is that AR minus dot plus uh, will be reduced to the AR minus species. That AR minus species reacts with the proton to form the quinoline species, ARH. So it goes from chloroquinoline to the quinoline species. And so species D is the reduction of the quinoline species, and the peak for R is the overall two electron process for the reduction of the chloroquinoline that eventually makes quinoline as the product. So there's a two electron reduction to quinoline, which is then reduced at a more negative potential. So this would be 
an example of an EC, E, C, E reaction, okay? So this would be reduction of chloroquinoline to the radical anion, ARX minus dot. This would be the splitting off of the uh, halide species. This would be the reduction of the radical to the AR minus. And this chemical reaction would be the uh, addition of the proton or the uh, acid base reaction of the AR minus and the proton. And then this last E would be uh, reversible. So this would be E, R, E, R, E, R, C, I, C, I. Okay. That's what you'd get without the nucleophile in there, the benzene thiolate. What's happening when we put the benzene thiolate in the system? The first wave, R, now drops in current by a large, a large amount. Why is that? Because the overall process is electrocatalytic. Notice that we've uh, taken that species out and we've, uh, we've removed it as being a part, as a lot of electrons are being not being used in that particular case. Notice, once we've added the nucleophile to the system, now it's easy to oxidize. So we've overall produced the ARNU species without going through any electron transfer step. Now there's always a little bit going on, and that little bit that goes on is going to be producing D as before. So whatever does not undergo this nucleophile addition step goes through this step here, and that's what we see in these two particular ways, R and D. And then species P is the reversible reduction of the ARNU. Okay. So it sounds a little so we've got two, so, what, so, so what, what's going on is that with the benzene thiolate in there, we've got a lot of problems interpreting the results. Once we take the benzene thiolate out, it becomes a very, comp, a very simple reaction really to study uh, for, an electron for a chemical reaction. But then when we put the benzene thiolate, you see that because of the reaction, we remove most, uh, we remove most of the current for R and D, but we still, efficiently generate the, the benzene thiolate. And if you added up the currents in D and P, it should be pretty much the same as what we see in the D without the benzene thiolate present. The net reaction is electrocatalytic to form the nucleophile ARNU plus removal of the X minus. So this is a process in which we can use to add the nucleophile without adding a lot of electrons to do it. There is still some of the initial reaction there, but that can be kind of ignored. And uh, the next reaction, the reason we get, so in a normal situation, we wouldn't have to worry about that too much because we can do the reaction so that we can try to minimize this particular set of reactions so that we can maintain an electrocatalytic process. And these are so some data that they observed and they see that it fits pretty well with the, um, the expected results and they're always in this particular part of the zone diagram which I'll refer you back to the other data, the other graph. So that's a pretty complicated, uh, pretty complicated uh, behavior. So we won't really worry too much about that. But just give you some idea of the flavor of these reactions. They are, can quickly become quite complicated and always what people want to do is try to minimize some of these reactions and you see how they, you know, to study this, what they would do is they would change the amount of the nucleophile to try to tease out the, to, the chemical process. Okay. Well. We've stopped here, and I want to, I want to, before we go on, I want to make sure that we're on the right track here. I forgot exactly. Um,
Does uh, you remember the next uh, chapter? Does it somebody have a syllabus? Four. What's the name of it? <coughs> okay. So read up on that chapter. Next time we'll start that next time. And uh, we're getting pretty close to the end of the. I think we have two more lectures after this one. I think. And so. Um, what we'll do is we'll talk about that next time and then we'll talk a little bit about some instrumentation, which we haven't talked about, and maybe some more about uh, uh, some practical stuff that, about electrochemistry. You know, things like that we haven't really talked about too much. <coughs>